Hi, my name is Helen Chersky and I'm an ocean physicist. In order to do my job, I, need to learn, I needed to learn how to scuba dive so that I could put instruments down into the ocean and see how things work down there for myself. But it turns out that the way scuba diving itself works is pretty cool. Scuba is all about adapting ourselves to survival in the water. There are some major differences between the land and ocean environments. And as a result, the systems that aquatic animals have, which enable them to live on water, are very different from the systems that allow us to live on land. Since humans don't have the right natural adaptations, we have to add them artificially using technology. The refractive index of water is significantly different to the refractive index of air, so light changes directions it goes from one to the other. You can see the distortion this causes if you look at someone through a glass of water. Our eyes have lenses that only work when there's air directly in front of them, so I need a mask to, to provide that air pocket. Fish eye lenses have some complex ad adaptations so that they work even when they're in direct contact with water. Water is very dense and also viscous, which means it creates a lot of drag. We can run and walk and dance in air, and it very rarely actually gets in our way. However, all that drag makes it, makes it much harder to move through water, so fish are streamlined to make their movement more efficient. Walking isn't very effective in water because there's nothing solid to push against and there's lots of resistance. We can borrow an idea from the fish though and wear fins which are very effective at underwater propulsion. The lungs of a human have evolved to take oxygen directly from the air and we can't absorb oxygen from the water like most fish do. So I can't take gills with me, but I can take my own air supply. The air in this tank is compressed to about 200 times the, the pressure in the atmosphere around us, and so I can easily carry a whole hour's supply of air with me. The last thing I need in order to adapt to the aquatic environment is some way of controlling my buoyancy. If you're heavier than the water around you, you'll sink down, and if you're lighter, you float up. However, a diver's buoyancy relative to the water around them may change with depth, so scuba divers use an air-filled jacket called a buoyancy compensator so that they can adjust their buoyancy by adding or taking away air. Once a scientist has all these artificial adaptations to the aquatic environment, it's perfectly possible to work down in the ocean almost as easily as you can work on the surface. You have to be aware of a, of a few more safety issues, but you learn to do that very quickly. So now I have my gear and I can go to work. Working underwater is definitely different to working on land. It's also used in astronaut training to give astronauts experience of something similar to zero gravity in space, because things don't automatically fall down if you drop them, they just drift off. So you tend to strap everything to you and keep it in place with elastic bands and retractable clips. In addition, you don't really have to worry about which way up you are. You always try not to touch any surfaces while diving because you might damage the organisms there so you aren't limited by having to have your feet on the ground. Scuba really is amazing and diving changes your whole view of the planet. There's so much going on down in the ocean and scientists really only understand the most basic things so far. So I'm really lucky that scuba is part of my job and that also that I can do my bit to help us understand this stuff that covers 70% of the surface of our planet.